of the real highlights in the Euro Anesthesia meeting is the pro-con debates, where experts take on two sides of an important issue in anesthesiology. Well, today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Imran Ahmad and Dr. Daniela Goda-Roja, who will be addressing the question, does my patient need awake intubation? Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Sam. Now, Dr. Ahmad, let me start with you because you're in the pro corner. Why is it ever necessary to do awake intubation? If you expect the patient to have a difficult airway or difficult intubation, not just, not just a difficult intubation, but maybe difficult airway management in general, then, uh, then traditionally teaching has been that we, we manage the airway awake. Uh, and, um, and, and data shows that actually if you put the patient to sleep when you expect it to be difficult, then you're more likely to run into trouble. And, and, and therefore, uh, you know, we, we, we teach uh, and, and we, we learn that uh, if you expect it to be difficult, then the gold standard should ideally be managing the patient awake. I'm sure uh, Daniela may, may disagree with that. Well, well let's find out, Dr. Goderoja, because you're taking the comp perspective. Do you think that uh, awake intubation should ever be used and when should it definitely not be used? Of course I used. And of course it should be used exactly as uh, Inrat said. There are still some circumstances uh, where uh, should not be used this, uh, uh, this um, uh, technique. This is a procedure that needs time to prepare it. So when um, uh, the life of the patient is uh, put in the difficult, in an in a, in emergency, so the patient will not survive if you don't take immediately measure. We need to uh, go for uh, other other type intubation directly. So, and this is this is the position of cardiac arrest, for example. But of course, uh, uh, this is a technique that every anesthetist should uh, should uh, uh, master. If you ask me, Dr. Ahmed, do you set the limits a little more broadly? I mean, what factors aren't we considering here? Uh, so one of the, um, the the key factors about doing awake intubations is actually it's not done as often as it should do, and, and we know from from data from published work that that people that anesthetists avoid doing an awake intubation when they probably should have done it, um, and, and therefore then and they've gone on to run into trouble. So the experience, the training, the the equipment, um, the, the timing, all these sort of factors are also need to be taken into consideration. When you're doing an awake intubation, it's not just about the patient and whether the patient has an anticipated difficult airway. Dr. Godoroja, what challenges are there with awake intubation that would lead you to avoid it? The experience is very important in here because it affects the rates of success of uh, awake intubation. So we need to spend 16 hours to learn how to intubate awake a patient. And then we need to practice once a week. So it's very easy. Uh, the second issue that is the local anesthetic. So if you do a local anesthetic of good local anesthetic, the technique is very easy to perform, to be performed. The technique of the sedation should be the, the minimal sedation. So that means uh, conscious sedation. Because uh, if we have a deep sedation, the, the risk is the array obstruction. Dr. Ahmad, what aspects of anesthetized intubation make that a challenging procedure? If you've decided to put a patient to sleep, anesthetizing a patient, and you've already anticipated that the airway management will be difficult, so you predict it, you predict that the, the patient has difficult airway, whether it be face mask ventilation, laryngoscopy intubation, or, or, or supercortical airway placement, then the data has shown that you are more likely to run into airway complications uh, with that patient, if you put the patient to sleep and then manage the patient to sleep. Whereas if you compare the data to managing those sort of patients awake, then your, your, your risk of complications such as failed intubation, such as uh, emergency front of neck airway, such as can't intubate, can't oxygenate, or even death, uh, is lower if you manage the patients awake. Just before we finish, it would be great if we could talk quickly about COVID-19. Has this affected um, your stance on this issue? Let me come to you first, Dr. Ahmad, with that. In March, we had a patient uh, who, who had a, a large laryngeal cancer known with airway obstruction who came in with, with COVID with respiratory failure and, and requiring intubation. And so we did an awake intubation on that patient and, and I wrote stuff as a case report and it was the first sort of published uh, patient who had an awake intubation with known COVID-19. Uh, and we learned a lot from that. Um, uh, and what we learned was, was, uh, was, was things like uh, communication is very, very difficult when you're wearing your full FFP3 mask, um, you're, you know, you're wearing a hood or, 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 a, or, a, or a reusable mask, uh, you're wearing visors, uh, you want very good topicalization because you really want to avoid the patient coughing because if you cough, that's a 
biggest risk of aerosol generation and therefore spreading COVID within the, within the room and within the people involved. Uh, but the key thing to remember is you know, these patients um, it, uh, still require air, uh, you know, awake intubations if they are expected to be difficult, whether they have COVID-19 or not. Um, so it's not going, you know, difficult airways are difficult airways. Dr. Godaroja, would you like to add anything to that? I think if there is an indication for awake intubation, should be kept and should be taken, the procedure. Uh, of course, the um, extra measures for, uh, for uh, reducing the aerosolized um, uh, in that, those patients and to protect the staff is very important. So this, this is the key issue, how, how we organize, how to do the step-by-step -step the procedure. Dr. Godaroja, Dr. Ahmad, thank you both for joining us and thank you for such an informative discussion. Thank you very thank much. You,